Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I wanted to share with you several things that you may not be issued by your department but you might want to invest in yourself. Now a couple of these things I'm going to talk about some people may have access to on an allotment that they can select things from. So my agency gives us money that we can use each year for an allotment and some of this stuff we can pick up on that allotment, but I'll be sure to point out the things that we can't because we have a pretty extensive allotment. So I'm thinking if we don't have it on ours, it's pretty unlikely another agency would offer that. There's also some different things I know just from agency to agency that are provided or are not provided. It's kind of weird that it's not more standardized. So I'm gonna go through all these things with you. The first is a duty bag. So I did a video specifically on my duty bag and everything in it. And I could basically cry at this point because I don't think that duty bag is gonna last me much longer. She's really falling apart. She's super old and I feel some kind of way about it. I am upset and I don't wanna get rid of it because I love the embroidery on it, especially with all my different agency stuff. When I do get a new duty bag, I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of way to really decorate it and make it more special and personalized to me because it makes me sad that she's falling apart. Everyone has different things that they like about different duty bags. Some people like the nine nylon or that fabric you can weave in and out of on their duty bag. Some people like the ones that lay over on the seat. It just depends on what you like and what's practical for you and your agency. So there's so many different varieties. I'll link some down below that you guys can look at, but definitely a duty bag. We were not issued a duty bag. If you guys have had one issued by your agency, let me know down below because I would be interested to hear that. The next thing we were certainly not issued were gloves to search people with. So over the years I had several for a while. We didn't even have any gloves on our lot. So I was using baseball gloves basically, which is still pretty gross because there are holes in them. But there are many different kinds of gloves that are available. I like the Hatch brand. I believe they still have some that have Kevlar in them, although that's also debatable whether people like that or not, or think it's important or not, they're available. I'll link some down below for you guys to take a look at, but duty gloves I think are a great option. Now, would you want to use them if somebody is covered in blood or urine or feces or something like that? Probably not. So you most likely would also have latex gloves with you, but for every day, just having to touch other things and people, I think those work really well. And that kind of ties into the next thing I'm gonna talk about. So some agencies will give you the small individual hand sanitizers, I would get a gigantic container of it with the little pump and put that right in my duty bag and I would pump it onto my gloves and wipe it around. So would that necessarily sanitize the fabric of the glove? I don't know. Watch somebody who is like a biochemist is gonna be, no, it doesn't, you're crazy, which you're probably right, but it would make me feel better because I knew I was just gonna to have to put them back on before I could wash them again. And while you're at it with your gloves, probably having a second pair in case you get something on one and, or one pair and you wanna, you know, use a different pair, so. That would be nice too. Then you can take them all home at the end of your shift and wash them. But you'll inevitably have to be touching people and you probably don't wanna do that with just your bare hands. Maybe you do, I don't know. I did not. So y'all hear me talk about flashlights quite a bit and you really don't have to have like really fancy lights or anything in my opinion, but I just think having more flashlights is very useful. I like the ones that operate on battery and that you can also plug in, but definitely ones that you can plug in to charge. They are making some now that have that universal plug-in for charging, which I think is great because you can charge it anywhere then. One of the annoying things about a lot of these flashlights is you have to put them on the specific charger for the flashlight, but now with what they're doing with flashlights, you have access to so many different options. There are a couple that I specifically like more and I I will link those down below, but just another option for you for your lights. Another thing I really liked having was my own clipboard. So I found that a lot of the clipboards that you can get even on your allotment or in the police issue with that bin underneath are just bulky. They were annoying. I actually still have a scar on my hand from cutting open the side of my hand. I don't know if you can see it 
from one of those metal paperwork holders. Just get a clipboard that you like. Don't feel like you have to use any of these outdated things that people still have laying around for paperwork or any of that. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about these paperwork holders, but the accordion file folders, if you don't have one, get one. Another thing that you're usually not issued are extra handcuffs. So in my agency, we're issued two, but have more. You know, people love to steal these. They love to say, oh, I'm just gonna leave them on your suspect and I'll take them to the jail and then I'll give them back to you later. No, they don't. They don't give them back to you. They steal them. So the other thing that I know a lot of people do, I didn't do this, but you can engrave your name in them and i think that they just did it themselves i'm not sure how they did it you can engrave your name in them you can write your name on them people are still going to take them i knew an officer who had multiple handcuffs with other people's inscriptions on it so that's not going to save you so you might as well get some more this is something that my agency does have on our allotment so we're able to buy more of those off of our allotment and i forgot to mention we also do have the gloves on our allotment and duty bags but not very many options for that and i've talked about this so many times again but a lighted handcuff key y'all you will thank me when you start using this it is awesome i have never seen a lighted handcuff key on an allotment i've also never seen this and this is a window punch and a seatbelt cutter. People have different knives that have all these different thingamajigs in it, but this is really easy to just attach to a key ring. I don't have my extras here with me right now, but I can definitely link them down below. And that would be extra tourniquets and medical kits. I don't think you can have too many tourniquets. I don't think you can have an excess really of medical supplies. Having that on hand in case you ever need it on a call or you ever, God forbid, need it yourself or another officer needs it, that is just an excellent thing to keep with you and have on hand. In my own agency, we've had officers who've applied multiple tourniquets to people at one time. Had they just had the one, they might not have been able to do that and have inevitably saved people's lives with that. So tourniquets and medical kits, if you're issued one, get another one, have a backup one. So many people have smartwatches watches now and that's a great way to have something available to you at all times that will tell you the date and the time so when you're involved in a case or you're making an arrest another good way to do that is just ask radio for a time check and hopefully they're listening or not too busy where they can give you one but they can at least give you a time but I can't tell you the number of times writing in paperwork or filling out tickets that you need to know the date and time so it's very helpful to have a watch back when I first started policing we did not have smart watches so I actually had just a little stopwatch watch I think it was like a little Iron Man one but that was really helpful since I always had the date and time on there another thing you're not issued but you probably want to have is some sort of sunglasses now I'll say with this especially for women I wouldn't go too crazy with design but also you don't have to wear Oakley's you don't have to look weird you don't have to look like a guy if you're a woman who likes wearing Oakley's you do you more power to you i don't like it i don't think it really looks that good on anyone is it functional is it popular yes i just i don't like them i think it's better for men but i just don't like them in general so my agency gave us a shiny pair of shoes to wear in the academy and gave us nothing else i'm pretty sure we had to buy our own boots or maybe they gave us one pair of boots but it was a kind of crappy pair of boots but invest in some really good footwear and if you're somebody like me whose feet are very sensitive, I have really high arches and I just cannot do the insoles of basically any kind of shoe. However, there are insoles that I can purchase that I can put in basically any shoe or boot and it will then work for me and it will be much more comfortable. So really invest on in what you have in your feet. If you notice that your feet are sore or they're tired, as a police officer, you're gonna be standing up a lot. You might be standing in one spot for a lot. You might be out on a crime scene. Scene. you might be running in your shoes or boots you want to make sure that whatever you have on your feet it's really really comfortable specifically for you if your agency gives you something and it doesn't work for you you don't like it explore what else you can do because you don't want to have your feet be uncomfortable having a bag that's specifically made to keep your things for the range is awesome and I don't know why it took me so long to get one but I absolutely love having one right now and my agency has these bags on our allotment which I'm so happy about every time I go to the range I'm talking about it and telling people go on your allotment and get them one thing we used to have on our allotment and luckily 
I did get a pair. These are my ultimate all-time favorite ear protections. I'll try to find these and link them down below, but these, in my opinion, are superior to the ones that we now have on our allotment. I also use these for my kids when we go to monster truck shows or fireworks because there's little... I'm guessing some kind of a microphone in there. When you turn it on, you can hear people speaking, but you still have the ear protection for the firing. And they're awesome. I'll try to link this exact pair down below. Like I said, they are pricier. When you think about how much you're gonna be shooting and wanting to protect your ears and your hearing, I would definitely invest in some kind of electronic ear protection. Again, it just makes it a much more enjoyable shooting experience, especially when you're already nervous and you're qualifying to know that you're hearing every single thing the instructor's telling you, and I really like these. And I always forget to mention knives, having some kind of knife that is accessible to you so you can cut something if you need to. Those are always really great to have around as well. And a screwdriver, I talk about that in my duty bag video, but having a screwdriver available if somebody needs one for anything, if you're removing a tag from a car, those are really convenient things to have around with you too. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments. Y'all, if I'm missing anything, please let me know if there's something that you think is really valuable to have that you weren't issued. I definitely am not able to think of and cover everything, so I appreciate when you guys share with our whole community. I'm just gonna remind you guys to make sure that you're subscribed if you would like to see more police related videos from me and don't forget to like this video if you liked it if you know of somebody who is going to be sworn in soon or is gonna be starting a police academy soon definitely share this video with them so they can take a look at and consider some of these things as well as always y'all stay safe out there thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye guys I have one that thinks, one that thinks.